it gradually pushed them back until they got to Bridgewater. By this time, the royal troops were at Somerton, moving towards Othry, Middlesoy, and Western Zoyland. So eventually, James, Duke of Monmouth, got back, got into Bridgewater on the 5th of July. Now, there is lots of speculation and lots of conflicting stories about this, but they believe, they were told, that the Duke of Monmouth climbed St Mary's Church Tower to look at the troops in Western Zoyland. This was on the 5th of July. But bear in mind, you can't see Western Zoyland from the tower now, and the, their spy glasses were very, weren't very good. So they say expect the most he would have seen would be in a farm at Penzoy, which is probably a mile from the village, <laughs> if he was lucky. So a lot of the battle, the battle itself is very factual, but a lot of the rumors and the incidents that happen are speculative. Yeah, so which is imagine. very often the case with yeah. um, history. Yes, it is. It's very speculative, some of the things that happened. But the factual point is, he decided the only way he would be able to form a battle was to do it as a surprise. It had been raining for days before this battle, and it was... If you've ever been on the, Sedg the Somerset levels, when it rains and it's warm, it's misty, right? So they set out with 3,000 men with cloths on the hooves, ho hooves of the horses, and they were banned from talking. And 3,000 men walked down the A39, which is there now, which was the old Bristol Road, but actually is now known as the Bath Road. And they walked down out of Bridgewater and they turned right at a village, the, the turning of the road called Bradney Lane, which is still there today. And these troops walked across, turned right, and walked down Bradney Lane to Pusey Farm, which is actually um, like Boroughbridge Mump, like a mump. It's a farm on top of a, a lump of earth, which was left after the Somerset levels drained. So they stopped there and they turned right again. And they followed the pathway of the Black Ditch, which is no longer there. And the Black Ditch is actually part of the King Sedgemoor drain now. Now, they walked along this ditch very quietly, bearing in mind the king's troops were in Chedzoy, which was the village between the Black Ditch and the A39. And the king's troops were actually in the village of Chedzoy. And the troops, the, the rebels, could actually see the king's troops in Chedzoy. But because it was so foggy, the King's troop couldn't sit, and they were being so quiet, couldn't see the, rebe the rebellion for soldier, foot soldiers because it was too dark. So they, this is going back, this is now probably about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. So they walk slowly along these ditch, this ditch, and then they turn towards Western Zoyland. <clears throat> And they knew they had to cross a reen, which is a ditch, called the Bussex Rind. Now, they knew there was two bridges over this ditch. One was called the Upper Pludgeon, and the other was called the Lower Pludgeon. But because they didn't know whether there was water in this reen or not, because it was as wide as the King Sedgemoor drain is now, but it was virtually dry. But because the mist, when you walk across the Somerset levels, is so it drifts, so you can be walk, your middle can be under the fog, but you can't see your feet. Yeah. 
So you can imagine these 3,000 men had no idea where they were in the middle of Moorland at two o'clock in the morning. You can imagine they were frightened to death. Yeah, I, I can well imagine. <laughs> it's, it, well, even today it can be a frightening thing. So It can be. So they had no idea where they were going. And when they, the, the biggest problem was this confusion where the plugeon was and how deep this ditch was and whether there was any water in it. So consequently, as they got near it, they couldn't see it because it was so dark. There was a loose gunfire. Now there's lots of speculation who did this gunfire, but they don't really know. But Daniel Defoe of Robinson Crusoe fame was a rebel and he was actually in the army of the Battle of Sedgemoor. But he says it was a loose cannon had actually done it. So whether somebody decided he was got too frightened and fired his gun by accident, they do not know. So of course that alerted the troops who were all circulating around. And it wasn't long before they managed to get all the soldiers that were camping on the edge of Western Zoyland awake from their side of drinking the night before to get themselves organized. And when they did a dig on two men in a ditch, they found things like buttons where they were rushed to putting their coats on and shoe buckles that had fallen off because they couldn't see them in the dark. So they found a lot of those where they presumed the tents were. So they knew roughly where- Where their the encampment was. Was, yes. So, but they had quite 26 guns. The Duke of Monmouth had two, well three, one didn't work. So his element of surprise, which he hoped he would get, was destroyed. Oh. And once, so once the royal troops got going, they just massacred them. 